Hey guys, um, today we're going to be talking about mutations. So we are on this page of the notes. We are almost done with this unit, so we're almost there. Hopefully um, we were able to make it through digital learning and we won't have to continue too much longer because I do miss all of you guys. Um, so today we're just going to talk about mutations. And so mutations are just anytime there is a nucleotide change in the sequence of DNA. Okay, so anytime that the sequence of DNA is changed for some reason, it could be random, it could be because of a carcinogen, anytime that the nucleotide sequence is changed, that's a mutation. Okay, and there's two categories. There's gene mutations, which are going to usually be one base, and so these only affect one gene. Okay, so they can be substitutions, insertions, or deletions. And then the second type, which is usually more severe and more detrimental, are chromosomal mutations. And those are going to be ones that affect many genes because it's affecting an entire chromosome. Okay. So what are causes of mutations? So anytime that something creates a mutation, we call that mutagenesis. So it just means making mutations, basically. Um, mutations can occur spontaneously or randomly, and this happens anytime your DNA is replicated and for some reason DNA polymerase messes up, maybe it messes up a single base, that's a mutation that does happen randomly. Um, and you do have to think with how much your cells divide, with how much DNA you're copying, with how much DNA there is to copy, at some point there's probably going to be a mutation that happens, and most of the time these are not noticed, so they're neither harmful nor helpful. Most of the time, they're just neutral. Um, and we call those spontaneous mutations because they just occur randomly. Um, and they can occur during recombination as well. Okay, the second type of mutations can be caused by chemicals or environmental components. And so these are the ones that you're probably most familiar with. These are gonna be the ones that mutate the DNA and um, would be called mutagens or carcinogens. So definitely know some examples of these. So radiation, UV rays, that's why you shouldn't go outside without sunscreen, x-rays, that's why if you get an x-ray, they'll usually put some form of lead covering over the body that is, the, that is not getting x-rayed because you don't want those x-rays um, exposed to your body for long periods of time. Uh, chemicals, asbestos, which is in older homes, and tobacco smoke is definitely a, a chemical carcinogen. Non-disjunction, so when chromosomes don't separate, that can actually be caused by environmental factors sometimes. Sometimes it's random, of course, but sometimes it is caused by something in the environment. And then lastly, this one's kind of unique, a viral infection, specifically um, HPV, the human papillovirus. And so this one is unique because viruses are little boogers, basically, and they are sneaky little boogers. What they do is they actually inject their DNA into your genome. So viruses can be, can be crazy. And we'll talk about those more um, in Unit 7. But those are the main ways that mutations are caused uh, in, in the genome. Great. So mutations are any physical or can be caused by any physical or chemical agent. Again, we call these mutagens. Don't have to write that down again. But this next bullet point is important for you to know. Mutations can be harmful, useful, or have no effect. And most of the time, they are they just have no effect. They're neither harmful nor helpful. Okay? The ones you guys think of probably are the harmful ones, like sickle cell would be one and you're like, "Oh, that's bad." Yeah, it's harmful, but there's a lot of mutations that can either be neutral or beneficial as well. Um, and then mutations are actually essential for creating genetic diversity because these are just random base errors in your DNA. And that random base error could cause a whole different hair color, could cause a whole different eye color to arise. So that's how we get different phenotypes is from genetic mutations. Okay. Um, somatic cell mutations, again, if you remember, somatic cells are body cells. If you have a mutation in your body cells, those are not going to be passed on to your offspring, okay? So if you get skin cancer, and it's not genetic skin cancer, it's just because you've been in the tanning bed every day for the past 10 years, which will do it, kids, don't do that. Um, that's not going to be passed down to your kids. I mean, your stupidity for going in the tanning bed every day for 10 years, maybe, but... 
Somatic cells, if there's a mutation there, that doesn't get passed to offspring. However, if you have a mutation in your gametes, that will be passed on to your offspring because again, you would have the mutation in your sperm or your egg, it would combine with the other gamete, and then you would have a baby. Well, that baby's gonna have the DNA that's mutated, that came from you, okay? So somatic cell mutations will not be passed on. Gamete mutations or mutations that occur in sex cells will be passed on. So those, those can be bad. Okay, so we are gonna talk about point mutations first. So we are up here where it says two types. The first type is gene, single base mutation, and then there's a couple types. We're gonna talk about point mutations first. So point mutations are when you're replacing one nucleotide with another. So when we're talking about point mutations, we're talking about a single base, a single nucleotide, okay? There's three types. One will result in no change in the protein, meaning the amino acid is not changed. One, you're going to get a stop codon created, and then another one's just going to change the one amino acid. And so sometimes these aren't significant changes, and so you can have point mutations that go unnoticed or that aren't harmful. Um, one point mutation to take note of is sickle cell anemia, and so sickle cell anemia is caused by a single amino acid change, and that one single amino acid change makes the protein not fold correctly, and so you can't make that certain protein, and that protein happens to be um, used in hemoglobin or red blood cells, okay? So that's just the sickle cell one. If you note the original amino acid in normal adult without sickle cell is GLU, and then there is a mutation that gives us BAL. So initially we have GAG. The mutation is changing that A to a T, if you have that mutation, you then have sickle cell. Okay, so the three types of point substitution mutations. First one is silent, and this is exactly what it sounds like. There's no change in the amino acid. And so there's multiple combinations, multiple codons that can code for the same amino acid. And because of that, if the mutation still codes for the same amino acid, that's gonna be silent, meaning that nothing's gonna change. Okay, the amino acid sequence isn't changing, the, the protein will fo fold properly, and um, it most likely will not be noticed. It's not noticeable, okay? Second type is missense. This is when you're changing a single amino acid. So sickle cell would be a missense mutation because you're just mutating one base, changing one base, and in that you have um, changed the amino acid that it codes for. And then lastly is nonsense. This is when a stop codon is introduced. This one can be kind of bad. Um, if you're introducing a stop codon in the middle of a gene, that's usually not good because you're not gonna be able to code that gene. Um, and so my way to help you remember nonsense is whenever you're acting up in class or at home and someone's like, stop that nonsense, that's what that means. So nonsense creates a stop codon when there shouldn't be one. Okay. The other type of point mutation is called frame shift mutations. And so frame shift mutations are usually more detrimental or harmful because that's when you're adding or deleting nucleotides. So when you're adding or deleting nucleotides, it changes every most of the time. It changes every codon after you've added or deleted that base. So in that you're changing every amino acid usually or most amino acids after the insertion or deletion, okay? We call that altering the reading frame. So if you remember, you read mRNA by codons every three bases. Well, if you delete a base, everything will shift over. And if you add a base, everything shifts that way. That's not good because that means most of the time, every amino acid after that point is being changed. And so that's called altering the reading frame. And that's why we call these frame shift mutations because it does affect most of the time, every amino acid after that mutation. Um, so insertion is when base is inserted. Deletion is when base is deleted. Both of those can be really, really bad. Okay, so these are just the examples. I do want you to take note of the different amino acids. So silent, where's our mutation? Here's our mutation, but it did not change 
The amino acid sequence, the amino acid sequence is the exact same, so that's a silent mutation. Okay, missense, we have a mutation right here. It did change an amino acid, only one though, so that's a missense when one amino acid is changed. Nonsense is when a stop codon is introduced when it shouldn't be, and so here we do see this stop codon is introduced. Usually those are not good because you would stop um, coding for your gene at that point. And then frame shift mutations, insertions, or deletions, these usually tend to be really bad. So if you look, we've actually deleted two bases, the T and the A, and in doing that, we have changed every amino acid after that point. So those can be pretty, pretty bad. Okay, and then the second type of mutations are chromosomal mutations. So we are now at the bottom of the page. You should have this picture. Um, chromosomal mutations are mutations that are a change in the number or structure of chromosomes. And again, chromosomes contain thousands of genes. So these usually are not good. Okay, if you're getting mutations with whole chromosomes, this is when you tend to get the genetic disorders we talked about or um, the baby won't be able to develop properly and you'll have things like miscarriages because when you're dealing with mutations in chromosomes that's mutating thousands of genes possibly and that's really not good okay so there's three types of chromosomal mutations you're going to have to identify them based on like an image showing it or a description of it so the first type is duplication if you're duplicating something you're copying it so duplication is when a segment of the chromosome is copied. So in this first picture, we have this normal chromosome on the left, and then we see that we have copy B. B is not a gene, guys. B is probably 100 to 200 genes. It's that whole segment of the chromosome. So you have now copied 100 to 200 genes on the same chromosome. That's not good, okay? So that's duplication. Inversion, if you invert something on itself, you're just kind of switching it. That's basically what inversion is. So it's when the chromosome is reversed and it's not how it's supposed to be reversed, okay? Because your chromosome is supposed to be A, B, C, D, E, F, okay? When you have inversion, you have A, E, D, C, B, F. And that's not good because the genes for your hair color should be up here and now they're down here. Okay, so that's really, really bad as well. And then the last type of chromosomal mutation is translocation. Translocation is not crossing over, guys. So crossing over occurs in prophase one of meiosis, and crossing over is good. It's what gives you genetic diversity. Translocation is when your chromosomes, like this is a complete, this is chromosome one, this is chromosome five, when they switch some of their genetic info, that's bad, okay? Because crossing over in meiosis, it's chromosome one, chromosome one. One's from your mom, one's from your dad, and they're just, they're basically shuffling the genes, okay? So let's say brown hair color, blonde hair color, and they're like, oh, let's switch. Translocation is like, this is chromosome five. This has nothing to do with hair color. This is chromosome one. This has hair color on it. And then they switch genes. Now five has hair color, one doesn't. Like, it's just so bad. They're not the same chromosome that they're switching over. And so this is nothing like crossing over. This is much worse. So translocation is when a part of a chromosome breaks and attaches to a different chromosome. Again, that would mean if this would be, let's say this is chromosome 10, this is chromosome three. They should by no means be crossing over, but they are, okay? Or translocating, but they are, okay? So make sure you watch the videos or do the worksheets or whatever that I've said for you to do, because it is important you practice how to make these mutations and then practice identifying the mutations when given a sequence of mRNA or DNA, anything like that. Okay, have a good day. Miss you guys, love you.